You're listening to the AfterBuzz TV network. Now the largest new media platform on the web and your number one source for after show entertainment. Very good, Keith. Johnson. The AfterBuzz Studios in Los Angeles, California. Presented by Maria Menunos and Bing.com and streaming live thanks to Akamai Technologies. This is AfterBuzz TV's Castle After Show. We'll break down tonight's episode and get you all the latest news and gossip. If you'd like to buzz in on tonight's show, you can buzz us at 424-256-1729. That's 424-256-1729. And now, another post-game wrap-up show for your favorite TV show. It's After Buzz TV's Castle After Show. <laughs> Don't you just love the theme music to Castle? So, hey, what's up, everybody? Bing is for doing it. We're doing another episode of Season 5 Castle, Episode 7, The Swan Song. I am Bam Erickson, and I would like to introduce my co-host. Yes, hi, I'm Paige Sullivan. Welcome back. Hi, and I'm Larissa Shamar. All right, so this episode, The Swan Song, and so when Tamala Jones is on here as a guest, she informed us that there would be an episode in, uh, in the future uh, that would be kind of documentary style where cameras will be following them. So we knew this the episode was coming. And so this episode was a documentary style. So what did you guys think of this particular episode? I liked it. Mm -hmm. I thought it was a nice break in the pattern. I always say that when they get to the Hamptons or uh -huh. when they go on a trip. I like when they do that. So this was kind of fun. It loosened it up a bit. You got to see some goofy moments uh -huh. from people maybe like, Gates, who you don't normally see loosen up and no, yeah, act she out was, of character. She was totally different. Yeah. <laughs> Showing out for the cameras. What I think everybody was kind of like different. They kind of went above and beyond on their acting skills mm -hmm. and they kind of made it like a home movie. Yeah. You know. Yeah, yeah, it was a little bit home movie-ish. Yeah. But that's normally what people do when they see the cameras. Everyone's like, oh, hi, I'm Bam Erickson. And we are here, you know, everybody always kind of plays more into it and not really knowing that they should be natural. And yeah. so I thought that was kind of cool. I think the only person who obviously didn't play it up was Beckett. Mm -hmm. yeah. But she did the complete opposite and she yeah. froze and she didn't even act like herself. Yeah. It was very strange. Seeing her, she had the scowl on her mm. face the entire episode. But you know what? That's typical of Beckett. You know, she's, you know, she that's just kind of her personality. She wouldn't be amused about that because mm -hmm. she's all about the business and the cop and the investigation. And so I would expect that from everyone except for, for Beckett. I mean, I think she did a great job just kind of maintaining her composure yeah. and, like, professional and everything, but I just think that Esposito and Castle mm -hmm. and Gates, they just really kind of took it to another level yeah. where they had their five minutes of fame, yeah. you know, while they at work and just kind of took advantage of it. Yeah. Would you, okay, would you would have done it? Done, if you done were, that in yeah. front of the camera? Uh -huh. I think I would try very hard not to, uh -huh. but I think it's hard when there's that presence around <laughs> you that yeah. isn't normally there, uh, things I might normally say I wouldn't say or yeah. I would say things out of character for myself. Uh -huh. I don't know. I think you never know until you're put in that position. Mm -hmm. Luckily, I haven't been at work yeah. yet. <laughs> I think I will just be the same guy, mm -hmm. entertaining as possible, and just just normal, just mm -hmm. going with my own self. Because you look at it like, even though it's a documentary, they're not getting paid for it. Mm -hmm. You know, everybody again, everybody wants their five minutes of fame, but at the end of the day, you still have a job <laughs> to do. And, you know, I thought they did a good job mixing wanting camera time and still getting the job done. It was just that when they were getting the job done and they were explaining what they were doing, that's when they were being, you know, at too much. I, I feel a little different. I feel like when when it came down to really getting into the nitty gritty of what was happening, they would get kind of serious. Mm -hmm. and be, this is what happened. We had to go to this room, do this. Yeah. They would get down to it. But at the end, they would stop, pause, and then say something really out of character. Right. Okay, so I'll take that back. And that's, that's actually what I was alluding to. They would get the job done, but once, once they thought that something was accomplished, then they would turn to the camera 
talk and, yeah, directly and they, yeah, to talk the camera. Di- and so now let's 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 go into the what we call personal recognition uh, personal recognition because you know each of them again wanted their five minutes of fame and yeah. so it immediately started with Castle. So once mm-hmm. <laughs> once they got into the murder investigation, he turned right to the camera. Hi, I'm Richard Castle. I'm a writer. And then he starts going into some of the titles, and then he references the the book that he wrote uh, about for, for for Beckett. And so, I mean, he totally, but you can kind of expect that, well, totally. Castle's in the limelight anyway. Yeah. I mean, he's been in front of the camera. He does mm-hmm. interviews on television. He gets photos taken of him often. I mean, he he's in the limelight. He's mm-hmm. a famous author. He's very wealthy. He's yeah. a bachelor as far as everybody else knows. Yeah. And so I think it was, he's always like that. Yeah. And he's always telling stories. You know, he's always allude, alluding to things that would happen in a book. And yeah. that was the same thing in this episode, only more so in a movie mm-hmm. when he would say, fade to black, da 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 and mm-hmm. make music happen. <laughs> I think he's so creative in his head, he can't help himself. Mm-hmm. It's just it's just in him. Yeah. I think he did for book sales. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> I think he did for book sales. <laughs> Yeah, hey, why not? Yeah. And then, of course, we already talked about Beckett, how Beckett was, she was really not wanting to fill the camera, and she was um, not really being herself. And so, you know, uh, Castle said, you know, hey, you know, I want people to see, you know, the real you and to kind of loosen up. And she did, like, once or twice. Yeah. You know. The end, the end she was funny. Yeah. Um, When she kind of dragged the cameraman into the closet, which I thought, you know, every Castle episode has humor in it, mm. which I think is the best part about it. Yeah. And so this was a way of her showing her funny even when she's trying to be really conservative. Mm-hmm. Okay. What about Esposito? <laughs> he was my favorite. Yeah. <laughs> I think he kind of took it more beyond than his normal character and really wanted to really get in the limelight. Because everything that he did, he did at times 10. Mm-hmm. You know, even working with his partner, even going out to the investigation scene, everything was about him. It wasn't mm-hmm. really about the job itself, but he just really wanted to be seen as a hero on the camera. What was really interesting about Esposito is when they first got to the investigation, he was like, you know, you'll be from a, from a crack land. So, like, he was real hard and tough, and he didn't want that camera there. And and he went to the director who was like, I really need this, I really need this, and he was totally against it. But then once the director got the um, the permit from the from City Hall, in which because they thought this would be a good PR, he totally changed his mind and he fed into it. And I like how Ryan called him out, how he made his T-shirt tighter so that you know he could <laughs> make his little muscles appear bigger, which I thought was pretty interesting. That was fun, it, and also it's funny because. The way they interact with each other was different, mm. too, because between Ryan and Esposito, they kept complimenting each other. Oh, he's the brains. Yeah, he's the brawn. Yeah. And all this <laughs> stuff. And it was just like, on a normal day, they're just fighting. Yeah. I mean, brotherly fighting, best friend fighting. But mm. this was so funny because they wanted to look, they both wanted to look like the good guy, the guy people would root for. Yeah. And in turn, they're trying to look each other, make each other look good. It was, it was cute to see, but it was just funny to see how yeah. different that is from every other episode they mm-hmm. do. Yeah, I think that... You know, they definitely did a great job of complimenting each other. But I think Esposito really wanted to kind of let everybody know he has other talents yeah. versus, like, I'm not just a cop, but I'm an artist. Right, I'm a be- singer. Right, because... <laughs> I'm a performer. Because we've never, we've never seen this side of him when... when, um, when, Beck, uh, when Castle and Esposito were at the guy who they thought... Sam. You, you know, Sam. Sam yeah. Spear. They thought he was a, they thought he was a killer and actually he was a composer or whatever. And so once he showed them the sheet the sheet music, he starts looking, he's like, Oh, okay, yeah, you know, this is good, this note to the and Castle's like, Wait a minute, what do you know about this? He was like, I do know music, I can't sing and, and Castle's like, No, I've heard you, you can't sing and he was <laughs> like, No, seriously. It was it, it that was just a bad karaoke night, but I really can't sing and then of course we actually see Esposito at the end and he actually can sing. Yeah. Yeah, and I I think I mentioned to you prior to watching the show, mm-hmm. Twitter. Don't go on Twitter if you haven't seen the show yet because <laughs> they're all tweeting away saying what they thought about the show and I totally before I show now, I don't go on Twitter. Yeah, it's hard cuz yeah. I it's a habit now. Yeah. I'm constantly on Twitter and all the yeah. social media. Yeah. And John who plays Esposito mm-hmm. tweeted a link to the song so if you want it you should check it out on twitter mm-hmm. if you liked the song i don't know if anybody actually wants the <laughs> yeah. song on their ipod but um he tweeted it out so i was really dying to see what it was and they saved it till the very end and i was waiting the whole episode uh-huh. for it to come so you're one of those you're one of those people where like the song listening to the song it just will bother you yeah uh-huh. yeah i didn't listen to it uh i have a problem with 
reading ahead. Uh-huh. You know, if there's a spoiler alert, I will <laughs> I will yeah. read it and ruin the next episode for myself. So with Twitter, I try very hard mm-hmm. not to. But for all of you at home, iTunes, go check out our podcast. You can like us, rate us, comment, tell us what you think, tell a friend, and they can check us out. If there's something you want to see different or hear us talk about more, let us know. And also, if there's a show that you want to recommend to us that you think we should be doing that we aren't, feel free to let us know that as well. So make sure you check us out on iTunes. All right. And also, don't forget the podcast app. Oh, the podcast app. Yeah, the podcast app, what it does is it organizes all of your subscriptions to all the great shows that you um, that you download to um, iTunes After Buzz. And so if you download that podcast, it just organizes all your subscriptions and it just puts everything in order. It automatically downloads it for you uh, and syncs it. So it's totally cool. So you guys, make sure that you check out the podcast app as well. Now, okay, let's talk about Gates, or as <laughs> or she is likes to be referred to as Sir. 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 Oh, my God. I, between, between she and Esposito, it was a toss because she totally was playing. She didn't want to come off as, you know, that tough guy. I don't want to say bitch, but, you know, she's very stern. She's a hard ass. She's a hard ass. Yeah. And she totally was, yeah, she totally played it in her favor she did she really wanted to look like she, she reminded me of like a team coach she's really rooting for mm-hmm. them and congratulating them when they do good jobs when it, in reality it's normally like get out of my office don't come to me until you've solved the case mm-hmm. and so it was funny to see her do that but it's also one of those things you this documentary don't they know they edit and what they can tell when somebody's faking and but, when somebody's but, but, real. But again, they are, you know, they're real people. Like we're used to cameras yeah. and things. Yeah. So they're they're real people. So they don't know that that everything and reality, all that stuff is edited, and you are um, you're made to to look like a certain person. They don't really realize that. So I think that's what all normal people do. Have you ever like videoed your family and you yeah. pull the family out and then you know there's always that cousin or auntie or some someone that just always kind of wants to like show off for the camera. Mm-hmm. Show off for you. Like your mom always puts you out there in front of like yeah. dance for the family. Yeah, dance for the family, sing yeah. and do. You know, <laughs> it's it's just kind of one of those things. And again, I thought I thought she was hilarious. I thought she was funny, and the whole episode. It was just waiting to see what they were going to say next, mm-hmm. what they were going to do different next, how they were going to act out of character next. And I think her and Esposito really took it mm-hmm. to another level. I think with Castle, we expect that of mm-hmm. him. And I didn't necessarily – I think it could go- have gone either way with Gates and Esposito. Gates could have been really tough mm-hmm. and sheltered kind of like Beckett was, and she wasn't, which was interesting. I think I like Gates the more, the original Gates. I mean, her kind of showing her soft side and really mm-hmm. kind of being, hey, I'm a team <laughs> player – it kind of basically makes it weak. And I like it when Gates is kind of like, be a hard ass. Hey, you know what? I don't want to hear nothing until the case is over with. Make sure you're doing your job and just kind of really managing the staff. Mm-hmm. So yeah. I just think, like, she went overboard. I was, there was one that I was disappointed with. Laney. Laney. Uh. <laughs> she only had two scenes, and I was just really bummed because I was hoping that we would see more of her. But what I did think was cool was that you didn't see her in her normal uniform. She <laughs> hair was done, a little more makeup. She had the little yeah. low cut top. She yeah, was cute, she did. you know. She and, was cute. You know, she was, you know, showing some, you know. <laughs> showing it off. Yeah. 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 In 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 a, like a morgue basically. Yeah. At, which I find I always find that so strange when you see them eating or chatting in there. It's like, there's dead people <laughs> yeah. in this room. Yeah. And she's all up in the camera. Oh, well, he never had these vaccines. And then she flips to the camera and smiles at it. It's like, yeah. oh, God, don't you know where you are? It's the five minutes of fame. <laughs> but again, it, you know, it's 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 a, it's a five minutes of fame. So, you know, that was how each of the, the main characters, that's how they displayed um, on themselves on camera. So let's get into the murder itself. Dun, dun, dun. So what did you guys think about the, the murder? I liked it. I think it had a lot of twists and turns, as it yeah. always does, yeah. but things I never would have expected. Even when they come up, I'm kind of it still had me thinking mm-hmm. about what was going to happen next. Yeah, it was definitely a lot of suspense and questioning everybody. Mm-hmm. Like Even with the suspect, you never really knew who did it or mm-hmm. why they did it until the actual end. So I think it was actually it was one of the better ones that I've seen. Mm-hmm. Okay, well let's let's just dive a little into the the murder investigation. So, there's a, of of course there's it's being documented, and what happens is they find the musician dead in his trailer. 
James Swan. James yeah. Swan. And so he's the leader of the band. Mm -hmm. He's a popular one. He's 27. He's dead. And, uh, you know, one of the first thing that Castle says is that he has the, uh, the he's in the 27 Club. 27 There's club. a lot of great musicians. Um, the recent one being um, Amy Winehouse, 27 mm -hmm. Dead. And so he alluded, he alluded to that fact. And so what happens was once they find him dead, there's banging on one of the doors or it's like a, a closet, closet the yeah. closet inside the trailer yeah. and so they find this girl her name is butterfly and she was clearly like high or something and groupie. she she she's a groupie but she was a three-month groupie because she had been around for three months so she's <laughs> been around for three months and she goes to his trailer every night mm -hmm. you know to get it in and so at some point, well, <laughs> when you put a time limit on the you know, like you initiated to yeah. be a groupie. <laughs> so, she, you know, that's what she said. She's been there for three months. And so she was passed out mm -hmm. the whole time that, 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 he, um, was killed, that he was killed. Was and she was locked in the closet, though. Yeah. There was a button they had to press to get her out. I don't yeah. know if it's security for, like, his guitars or something. <coughs> I don't know why you have a locked closet. That's kind of uh, weird. I wouldn't yeah. want somebody to put me into a locked closet. Well, I think I she was... Hi, yeah, drunk. she was yeah, totally because when she when she woke up or when she w when she was banging on the door and they opened the door, she looked a mess. You could you can tell she that was she was naked. Yeah, that too. <laughs> yeah, you know. Yeah. It was a fun night. Yeah. Fun night for some people, not so much for the guy she not, was sleeping with. Yeah. Not just but, one. But one of the clues that she gave was that she heard sounds of like horseshoes crunching. Yeah, like hooves. Yeah. And so that was a clue. Um and then she also said that she had um that that James Swan had been complaining about the band members and and how there's been tension between the bands and so from there she's kind of clear and they don't really think that she had anything to do with it and then so they go to the alibis of the members mm -hmm. yeah and she also mentions though that didn't she mention that somebody had been following him or was that a band member I can't mm -hmm. remember if it was her or not but <coughs> they allude to the fact that He'd been freak. He'd been on edge for a couple of weeks. Yeah, I think that's later on in the episodes when they actually when they performed in New York in Ithaca. Yeah, and he kind of yeah. felt like weirded out where mm -hmm. he felt someone was actually following him from the Ithaca show. Mm -hmm. And so one of the one uh, so all the alib so all the band members their alibis their they were all in their trailers, and but one did mention that there was a white van in the area. Yeah, that's yeah. what that's I was what, thinking. Yeah, she, yeah. yeah. Okay. so that happened right after. So mm -hmm. there's a white van in the area that. I guess somebody's stalking mm -hmm. James Swan, and they say he'd been thinking somebody had been stalking him yeah. since mm -hmm. they went to the Ithaca show, where they said he's been acting very uh, strange. Yeah. So, um, and Butterfly also mentions that the night he was murdered was the first night she felt he was at peace with himself. Yeah. That he was okay with everything. He didn't complain about the other band members, and he honestly seemed happy and content with the way things were going, which ended up to be a key mm -hmm. factor. One of the other key factors is when they went to look at the footage of one of his confessional interviews, mm -hmm. yeah. and that's when he referenced that <coughs> that he had a mentor, and the the the, the, um, the mentor was the guy who taught him how to how to play the guitar. Mm -hmm. And they asked, you know, were they still friends or whatever? And he said that no, he had you know seen that person in a while, mm -hmm. which goes, which is a, a um, which is a a key uh, point for what we find out later. Yeah, it's that's the one thing with Castle. You constantly have to keep on the facts yeah. because something that comes up that mm -hmm. seems miniature in the big scheme of things mm -hmm. ends up being a huge part yeah. of the puzzle um but yeah so they check with this white van the white van and they notice that there's a guy standing behind in the video and also on the pictures and so this guy happens to be the the father of butterfly, butterfly. yes and so he was following him just because he did. He feared that his daughter was going to be a groupie and get pregnant. Yeah, and get <laughs> pregnant. A, a valid, a valid reason mm. yeah. to be upset. I yeah. think maybe not to stalk. Yeah. Um, and, but and if he had plans to kidnap him just to scare him. Yeah. Uh, which kind of made him look very guilty. Yeah. Do do, gr do groupies get pregnant? Yeah, uh, I'm some? sure they do. Um, yeah, I'm pretty sure. You know when musicians have loved children uh -huh. scattered across yeah. the country. Well, I, yeah, I get. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I mean, but you know what? He was just basically being a typical father. Yeah. You know, because if it was my child, I would want to kind of know, like, what's really going on with her. He said he haven't seen her in a couple of weeks, and, you know, it's something new to him. Yeah. I agree. I think 
but he's cleared. Mm-hmm. I mean, he didn't do it. He really was just a concerned father. Yeah. So it's back to square one. And at this point, Esposito is totally acting like, we oh. got him. <laughs> we got yeah. him. Case yeah. closed. We got this. And then it all comes back. The blood they found was his own blood. Yeah. He didn't do it. He was looking for his daughter. And that kind of made Esposito look a little. It definitely, he definitely went overboard with some, kind of more of the like heart interrogator like and banging how, it on the right, table how you banged it, yeah. and Ryan just kind of steps back like why well yeah. he screamed at one point and you saw Ryan like jump himself yeah. like, he's like I've never seen him do that either exactly <laughs> very of, interesting very very shocking but overall you know the father got cleared as always so next and then so yes so after after that then he alluded to the hooves the, the horse seat, yeah. right? Yeah. Um, so they go to talk with the band again. Uh, and they're having practice. And they start saying, oh, or actually, did they go to Sam first? I was going to say, yeah, I didn't want to go, yeah, but yeah, cut oh, you off. No, that's yeah. fine. Yeah, Sam Spear. Sam Spear. Gentleman who he has a lawsuit against. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, it's for a song, yeah. correct? Because mm-hmm. Sam is a composer. And he writes music, I think, for movies, TV, it seems yeah. like. Yeah, of course. And so they, they find out where he was that day. And so Swan had gone to his apartment, mm-hmm. condo, whatever you want to call it. And they hear all this noise, and they hear shooting. So yes. Esposito and Castle goes in there, and then, of course, they find out that it was the sound effect for the for what, for what the movie or TV show that he was, compo- for com- that he was composing. Right. He said yeah. it's just a bad movie. Yeah. <laughs> Which it sounded pretty yeah. bad. Yeah. Yeah. It sounded like it, it sounded like T.J. Hooker or one of those yeah. <laughs> movies from the TV shows from the 80s. And it was kind of corny. But, uh, yeah, so they go there and they find out that they weren't really feuding. It was they came to a a settlement. They were going to work together on writing. um, And we find out that Swan had taken out Mm $25,000. And we assumed he paid it off to Spear. But he didn't. Apparently he didn't give Sam any money. And he also says, you know, why would I kill a potential employer in this economy? You know, I'm not going to get another job. So that's when we find the sheets of music and we find out. Esposito can sing. Can sing. And He's read musically music. inclined. Right. Very. And so he points out that you know what this is a whole different direction. This kind of music. So where was Swan going? Were they? Was he leaving the band? Yeah, he was going solo. Yes. Yeah. Supposedly. Supposedly. Yeah, I think that's what um, Sam was really trying to get out, get at. But also, he basically kind of brings the idea to Esposito and Castle. Like, mm-hmm. you might want to go talk to the band members because. The whole idea of going solo, the band members probably wasn't happy with it, and the mm-hmm. new direction that Swan wanted to go in is something that the band w- didn't want to do. Mm-hmm. So they basically like kind of give the idea, and that's where the whole like the band member who had the shoes that sound like Comes horse, in. yeah, yeah, Keith. yeah, yeah but, Keith. But also they were auditioning new band members. Yeah, when they showed up, which yeah. is so soon. Your your buddy yeah. was killed like a day or two ago, so and now you're already on. yeah. I don't care. I mean, <laughs> don't you think you'd take a mini hiatus? The show must go on. Well, I mean, look at TLC. They, you know, yeah. they didn't. They didn't go and get a, a new left eye. Yeah. I mean, you can't get a yeah. new left eye. Yeah. You really can't. Yeah. <laughs> it's only one T boss. Yeah, that is true. <laughs> but it it made like it made it seem like Keith was guilty for, um, for replacing uh, a, a member so soon. Right, but and he, he when he walked off. Yeah, because first he lied when they called him out on saying you knew he was going solo, mm-hmm. and he wasn't going solo. But his girlfriend worked at the record label and heard that Swan wanted to do something new and was setting up these meetings, mm-hmm. and so he had assumed he was going solo. Yeah. So not only did he lie about knowing that, now they think he's guilty of murdering him. They're saying, why would we believe you? You already lied to us once. Yeah. But his alibi was he was. Getting it in in the trailer with a groupie. Yeah. yeah. They say, what's her name? I don't know. I don't know. What's her number? I, I don't, don't know. know. <laughs> That's a true groupie. That's a true groupie. You're right. <laughs> yeah. Swan had it down wrong, apparently. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Butterfly was there to stay. Mm-hmm. But, um, was falling in love. Yeah. And so they kind of are watching the sex tape in the precinct yeah. um, while the documentary is being filmed, which Gates is not happy about. But it's kind of funny. And, um, and from there, they move on to the next suspect. Yeah, and they, but then they also they also discovered that there was no records of him. Yeah, they found that out before yeah. even going to Sam. Yeah, not, not well. They found out at <coughs> first that led them to that was that he didn't. Well, Laney wanted them to Laney. know was that he didn't have a polio vaccine and he didn't actually have any of the vaccines he was supposed to have mm-hmm. that every American has. 
usually. Yeah. And so that leads them to look into his past. And he only popped up on the map when he was 17. And there's no records of him whatsoever. And it turns out he was part of a cult. Yes. Yes. And so they don't say how he got there or how young he was. No. But you know he escaped. Yeah. The, the cult was called Ithaca. Well, it Not was over. in Ithaca. It was called... Uh, it was a name, a church name. Oh, you, you were in like Yes, it. that's what it was, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, but it was in Ithaca, which leads back to the fact that he started acting weird after the Ithaca show. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, that kind of leads... That's where I got all... You know, I was kind of anticipating something big to happen mm-hmm. because... Uh, they don't really play with cults in this. Uh, cults kind of freak me out, and so <laughs> I didn't know where it was gonna go. I didn't either. And th- there was an ap- appearance by um, by C. Thomas Howell, a uh, classic actor, and so he was John Campbell, who was the head of this church, this cult. Yeah, freaky. Yeah. yeah. That stuff freaks me out. And he'd already been arrested for murder, and when he got out, he started this church, and apparently, the church and the cult. He has a 200-acre pot farm or 20-acre pot farm. 20-acre pot farm. And and he profits from it while the people in his cult work on it. So it's all it's all about himself, and that's what that's what's freaky about it. And that that was the only part that wasn't super lighthearted for me, because just thinking Mm. about cults kind of freaks me out. (coughs) But from that, they they bring in another girl who had escaped to give them a little more information about him. Yeah. Yeah. Caroline pretty much she comes in and confesses and kind of gives them more of an enlightenment of what the cult is about and who is John Campbell, you know. And from there, she kind of portrays him as being a guy you really don't want to mess with because mm-hmm. he's dangerous. He has a temper problem, and he don't want any other children to leave out of the cult because it is a cult because they work for him. He he is their leader. Yeah. And what ends up happening is that you know, Jane Swan did leave the cult, but we also find out what she confesses her relationship with the coat and how you know the importance of not leaving the coat and we come back to the twenty five thousand dollars which we uh-huh. think because we find out james swan went to go see john campbell mm-hmm. is that he must have paid him off to get out yeah but what turns out is caroline doesn't she also m- oh we find that she gives us information about buck H- yeah buck, buck his buck. best friend buck uh cooper Yes. Buck Cooper. Mm-hmm. He uh, he has been a missing person, according to John Campbell. He yes. filed a missing por- persons report, which is that we were they were looking into police records to try and tie John Campbell mm-hmm. to the murder, which they weren't having any luck. But they did find this missing person. Yeah. Turns out, James' best friend. So. And he he's out now. So he's out. So they have to find him. And he's also been assigned as the road manager for the yeah. group. Which we so we've met him previously. Yeah, and we did. Yeah, we just thought I thought he was just a super shy, awkward mm-hmm. roadie. Yeah, who was just really impressed by the band. Yeah, I think he was really just trying to keep a low key because, because like again, he just left the cult and he was basically being part of a new band and mm-hmm. didn't know his position in the band. Yeah, so uh, he we also find out was the mentor. Yeah, for James, he's going to taught him how to play, and he's really good. Mm-hmm. Apparently, he's got really good skills. Yeah, mm-hmm. and um. And so that's when they kind of put it together that, you know, he was replacing somebody in the band. Right. But then also because in in um, James's confession, though, he did say that his mentor, you know, had taught him how to play. So that's how they were able to figure out that. Right. Wait a minute. James said that he wasn't in contact with the best friend. And so they were able to then figure it out that what his intention was, was he was but potentially, I guess, going to leave the group um, and have have um, Buck be a part of the group? Or do you think that do you did you think that he was going to be in the group with him or was James going to leave? No, I think he was going to be in the group with him. Okay. Um, I think those were the intentions. And I think yeah. that's what they got to kind of was that he's a great uh-huh. musician. Yeah, he's got great skills. And so he was going to bring him into the band. And this was his way of giving back to Buck for everything that he got because if Buck hadn't taught him how to play guitar and hadn't given him those skills, he wouldn't be where he was. And so this was his chance to give Buck something. Yeah. I think also, like, anytime you kind of bring somebody new in the band, somebody has to go. And and the great thing about (laughs) it is that, hey, I mean... Who who who's the better musician mm-hmm. overall? Because together they've been they've been on the road for like past fourteen months, so they're basically trying to basically take their career to another another step in their lives and everything. So I think at this time, bringing Buck in is definitely a great asset to the band, especially being that their bass player couldn't play guitar. 
Well, he could, yeah, he couldn't play the new notes that were written for him, mm-hmm. correct? They were, complicated. And so they were too complicated. Yeah. And that's kind of how they pinned it on him. Zeke was yeah. his name. Yeah, Zeke, yeah. And I never would have expected it to be him. He was very quiet, very yeah. goofy. He kind of seemed like the odd man out a little bit. Yeah. Um, and I, ca- I felt for him a little bit. I mean, I can imagine how painful that would be to have this person who, he must know he was the best in the group. They all know he's the leader of the group. Mm-hmm. Um, tell you you're not good enough and you're <laughs> out when you put like they said five years into this this has been his life for five years and now they're about to make it big and he's cut i'm gonna step on the other side i don't feel sorry for him well he killed somebody I it's know. like any job yeah. like, you go into any job it's always the new younger guy who have more skills than you and if you can't keep up you just lose your job or why didn't he take lessons or why didn't he if he couldn't play the notes why couldn't he have done something to enhance his skills but it's also a, a thing you have to look at where you're in a group mm-hmm. people accept you for who you are but they're not going to tell you like hey you, you need to improve on this mm-hmm. you know and they and it even if they did they will only tell you so many times yeah so now it's like we need to look for a replacement because your your skill level is not where it needs to be because we need to replace you that's very true and in, in any group if you're not the lead singer you can be replaced at any given <laughs> moment. I mean, look at uh, look at some of the most popular groups. Yeah. If you're not that lead singer, <laughs> it's like you're fighting yeah. to make sure that you have a place. I feel like it's like that. I think it's one of those things where unless you have your own following, you yeah. know, you're you're that outstanding guy on the keyboard who kind of acts crazy and jumps around like or something. Around. <laughs> you know what I mean? Or or even if you look at something like Fall Out Boy, Pete Wentz is the most famous and he wasn't the lead singer. You know, you have yeah. to have something special about yeah. you that draws people to this band. Like Bobby Brown. Yeah, but he didn't have anything apparently. Zeke, <laughs> Zeke, <laughs> Zeke stood in the back apparently and yeah. played mediocre bass. And yeah. then he goes and he confesses the murder. Yeah, he was violent, too, when he yeah, was confessing. Very, he was yeah. mad. I think a lot of those guys had actually had, like, anger issues. I don't know, just because yeah, being in the band. Mm-hmm. But, Keith you know, I think too. it's kind of like just that aggression overall. Yeah, and you can tell he was totally frustrated because he probably knew the potential of the band, and he knew that they were, I mean, on the verge. Like, can you imagine, um, can you imagine being kicked out of the group before the group blows up? No. I mean, that would just, that would totally suck. Then he just feel like he's entitled yeah. to something. And I think when he went to go talk to, like, Swan about it, it just kind of went the wrong direction, as most cases it does, because when you're in a situation with anger, it never pl- plays out the way you need it to play out. Yeah. Because someone always overreact or say something that you that, don't mean. That you really don't mean, or do something that you really don't mean. You look at a lot of times, accident that has happened between two individuals, it's a misunderstanding. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I yeah. agree. And I think. Luckily, I mean, it was kind of sad in that in the interrogation room when he's kind of freaking out and getting mad and you find out what really happened. Um, but Buck, is, a, you know, finds out what the plan was and he gets he meets Keith and they're going to let him audition mm-hmm. now that they found it. It was just so strange. Oh, so Zeke really killed them. All right. Now, Buck, why don't you come join the band? It was yeah. just so casual. Yeah. You know, one of your best friends killed your other best friend. And he was like, you know, I think he would want it this way. And it was almost like, well. Why should he audition? Yeah. Why Why don't you just put him in the band? Exactly. It, it's a courtesy thing. You yeah. know, you can't be like, oh, well, I'm going to automatically give you the job, but not have 20 other candidates that's, that will audition for the mm-hmm. job. Knowing that you already have the job, it's like with any job in corporate America. It's like, yeah. hey, you know what, Bam, you're great for the job, and I know I'm going to give you the job because you're my best friend, but I still want you to, like, do what everybody else has yeah. to do. Yeah, exactly. It's just like the Good format point. of it. Yeah. But you know the crazy thing is, is that how Beckett, and Castle, like, pinned Zeke to the murder. They gave him the sheet music. and was like, hey, play this music. And he's just like, I can play this. Yeah, I can play it. No problem. Give me a guitar. And sits there and look at him like, I can't do this. Yeah. And then confesses to a murder like. Yeah, it was, I, I felt because we hadn't heard Zeke really say much the whole at episode all. or anything at all. And then he has this big dramatic emotional breakdown. I was like, Okay, a little different. <laughs> yeah, it was. It was kind of out of left field. I wasn't expecting it, yeah. really. Yeah. But, I mean, I never expect what happens in Castle, mm-hmm. really. So, <laughs> I mean. But overall, so were you guys pleased with the, this week's murder? Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. I, I was. was. <laughs> 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 I liked it. <laughs> like, simultaneously. Right? Yeah. I liked yes. it, though. I thought it was I fun. It was a good twist. 
it keeps me coming back for more every week yeah. because there's always something different. Like I said, with the Hamptons and with this, it's not monotonous. You know, it's, oh, what's the murder mm -hmm. this week? Oh. They kind of took away from, like, they slowly, but well, surely is taking away from Beckett and Castle. Being mm -hmm. the focus. Yes. yes. And I think that's a great point. But I, I do like the I do like the subtlety that they have. And so like of course because it was cameras there, they were trying not to display that. But then there was one moment when he was caressing her cheek and Cas and uh, at, when Castle was <laughs> caressing Becca's cheek and when she caught it she was like, you know, stop or whatever. And then when when uh, Gates or Sir decided that she wanted all the footage you know, Beckett is freaking out because if she finds out that the two of them have this secret romance, you know, this can we ruin know, her, yeah. this can ruin yeah. her career. And so when she calls him into the office, and <laughs> and you know, uh, but of course she admits that what happens is is they is is when she was doing an interview, you saw a Castle walking back and forth, and you know they call that something now because there's an app for that when you do um, photo bombing. Yes, photo bombing. Yeah, he so was documentary bombing. Yeah, her. exactly. That's exactly <laughs> what he was doing. A lot. Yeah, he's funny. I if Castle wasn't there, I don't know if they'd have any fun in that precinct because. No. I mean, mm. he's goofy. He's self-absorbed. Yeah, he but, is, but he's funny. Yeah, but I also. Next to be uh, next to Castle, I think Esposito. I think he's pretty funny too. Oh yeah. And they yeah. wrapped the show with him singing with the band, which was fun. It yeah. was a nice light way to wrap it all up. And to show his singing skills. <laughs> Download that song if you can. Yeah. <laughs> I, I actually like the song though. It wasn't bad actually. Yeah. None of the music was bad. No, it wasn't. I uh, mean, Esposito definitely showed his talent. Yeah, and be and because uh, you mentioned prior w before um, before we went on, you had already mentioned about how had John had had tweeted yes. about the song. So I'm waiting a whole episode. Like I'm thinking every time he had the sheet of music, I'm thinking that he's gonna like bust out and sing. <laughs> so I'm like waiting for it and waiting for it and waiting for it, and then finally it came at the end. I'm wondering if it's it was a YouTube clip, I think, or maybe an iTunes link. I'm wondering if it's like a full song or not. Yeah. I think that'd be fun to check out and see. I'll definitely check it out. I didn't want to do it pre-show because I didn't want to ruin anything mm -hmm. for myself, but I advise you all to check it out. I'm sure it's funny. Okay. You guys have anything else before we go to predictions? No. Nope. All right. So let's go to predictions. And now, you're after Buzz TV. Predictions. So we see that a priest is, a, um, is assassinated, and for some particular reason... Castle is needed in this murder. He's the, the focal point the of why to. the go-to person. Yeah, I mean, in general, I have no specific predictions. Yeah. It, I, it, it didn't give enough. No, it didn't. Yeah. It really gave you a, a brief Flip. sneak peek yeah. yep. at the murder itself. But normally they give you a little bit about, oh, well, Becca and Castle. Or, you know, so the side story, they give you a, a peek into what's going to happen. And I think, like you said, they're really coming off of the Beckett Castle thing now. Mm -hmm. It's not the main focus. And I think that's the way it's going to be. Yeah. I feel like they're going to take our attention off of this. This is a long-term prediction. Mm -hmm. And I know we're coming up on the hiatus, mm -hmm. kind of. I think they're going to take us off of it for a little bit and then kind of shock us. I don't know. That's a good point. You know what I mean? Like, leave us hanging for yeah. the hiatus. And I'm afraid they're going to do that because they always do that. <laughs> and we're not going to know for like a month. Do you have any predictions? I mean, I think the next the next episode it's going to be very intriguing. Mm -hmm. I mean, anything dealing with the priest is you're going to have like a lot of a lot more issues just because it's going to be like religious reason or for whatever the reason it might actually tie into something that Beckett has already written mm -hmm. in one of his books, and that's probably why he's so needed on this episode versus <laughs> like all the rest of them. Well, he researches a lot of things, so yeah. I think he's got a lot of knowledge that the rest of them don't have yeah. on B random things. Like he's the one who knew uh, about the cults. Yeah. And so he's a very, he's a sponge of, of information. Yeah, and yeah. that's why he's the creative force, you know. He's the creative person. When Beckett always says, she sees the facts. Mm -hmm. And so I think you're right. I think his creative side is going to be the reason they need him. Mm -hmm. You might actually see a more serious side of Beckett this time. Uh, I mean, of Castle. Maybe. Maybe we might. So you can get down to work. Well, we want to thank you guys for tuning in to another After Buzz recap of Castle Season 5. Um, I'm Bam Merrickson. You can find me on all social media at Bam Erickson. And I am Paige Sullivan. You can find me on Twitter at Paige Sell. And I'm Larissa Shamar, and you can find me on Twitter at Indie Music, E-N-D-E-E, -E -E, Music. All right, so thank you guys for watching. And I'm supposed to be at that camera. 
From Bing.com, executive producers Maria Menunos, Kevin Undergaro, Phil Svitek, and the entire AfterBuzz TV staff, we would like to thank you for listening to the AfterBuzz TV network. To watch or listen to other After shows and post comments or questions, be sure to visit AfterBuzzTV.com. I'm Sir Richard Wentworth, and this has been a presentation of AfterBuzz TV. Buzz you later. later. The views expressed herein are those of the hosts only and do not necessarily reflect the views of AfterBuzz TV or its owners or principals.